All right, what's up, guys? We're back with another one here. Today, I want to teach you five very, very, very important techniques you need to know if you want to play Street Fighter. Now, you don't need to master these right away, but these are things that you should eventually be able to do, and you need to at least be aware of what's happening, because if you're not using them, your opponent's going to be using them against you. So, uh, like always, uh, if you like this stuff, if you want more tips and tricks, hit that sub button. I'm here to help, but that's all I can do. I can't win tournaments anymore, but I can help you win them. Uh, so anyway, let's go. All right, first one. Very, 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 very important here. So I want to talk about buffering, okay? Buffering. Now, you might be a brand new player who doesn't know what you're talking, I'm talking about. You might be familiar with it. So buffering is, of course, canceling a normal into a special. You're like, Juno, I know this. This is very, very easy. But I'm not talking about combos here. I'm talking about in neutral, okay? So in neutral, look how I'm, I'm pressing a button and I'm buffering into the special, but nothing is coming out. This is a very, very key part of specifically Street Fighter. So a lot of times players will be pressing a button, they'll be buffering things, you don't even know about that. But when they do get that hit, for example, in this game, a universal buffer you can do is drive rush, right? So see, I'm pressing H, double tapping forward, nothing's happening. Ryu walks and gets hit, instantly just comes out, okay? So a lot of footsies is like this, right? It's back and forth, you're back and forth. You don't wanna walk into your opponent's range and press because a lot of times that means a block, they're blocked. You don't want to walk in their range, press the button and go for the special, right? You want to stay out of here. You want to do it from like right here while you're buffering in what you're trying to do. So when they do walk forward, you know it's going to hit. You can watch a whole video on it. This is like the basis of footsies, but this is something you should already be aware of is don't just press buttons in neutral. Don't just try and play footsies. Like I saw, I saw Daigo do this. Press the button and always be buffering in either a drive rush, right? Depends on your character. You can do, drive rush is a good option. Uh, a character like Lily here, I'm going to be buffering in this special, right? So see, my input's on the left. I'm buffering that in. So he walks over. Special combos like that. Start learning that from day one. Uh, I can't tell you what to do with your character. You got to look that up yourself, but you should always be buffering in something when you're playing footsies pretty much. Nine times out of ten, I want to say. Number two, this is a very, very controversial thing, but you have to be aware of this and you have to use it if you want to play. It's throw loops. So what are throw loops? They're exactly what it sounds like. It's looping a throw over and over and over again. Your opponent, there's almost nothing they can do about it except, except that they're in the mini game. All right, so here, let me just show you right now. So in the corner, throw loops are in the corner. So here, I'm throwing. You see how I'm right on top of him? So I can throw him, I can throw him. I can throw him. So you might be thinking, all right, if I know my opponent's gonna throw me, let me just jab, let me just get out of there. I set I set the computer to jab, so that's as fast as button. So let's see if it beats the throw. I might mess up, but ready? No, counter hit, counter hit, counter hit. As you see, even though I messed up the timing, it does not work. That's the whole point of a throw loop, is that your opponent cannot check. They have to deal with this. So. The only real options they have are, of course, you know, an invincible reversal, which is unsafe. If they read it, they block it's unsafe. You also might think jump is an option. So already, I'm gonna set him to jump here. I'm gonna try throwing. Jump doesn't work either. Jump, it's cheap. Jump doesn't work either, as you see right there. They can react, they can see the whiff, see the jump in DP. Four jumps the same way. Uh, backdash is an option. So depending on, depending on the character, Backdash is an option, right? But it's still very risky. But what, the, basically what I'm telling you, I, I'm rambling here, is throw loops are a very, very big part of Street Fighter VI. And one way to get out of them, it's very, very risky, but it's of course to tech the grab, right? So if you tech the grab, if you take the risk, if you take the risk and you tech the grab, you create this space and you end the loop. But that's where the mind games come from, right? Your opponent's gonna try and beat the tech. There's all sorts of mind games, but just be aware. It's a very, very powerful offensive tool. As you saw, it's quite easy to do. So you should learn that early. And then if your opponent keeps throwing and you're wondering why, they're, they're throw looping. You. you can't mash out of that. It's airtight. You have to either tech the grab, EX reversal, or do like a risky jump. Now, let me show you this. This is not every character in the game can throw loop. Uh, the ones up there all can. Marissa, Lily, and Guile, they need to spend drive rush after, but they can still throw loop. It costs you a little bit longer. And for some reason, Honda and Chun-Li cannot, no matter what. But yes, as you see, majority of the characters in six can throw you, throw loop you, huge part of the game, know how to use it, know how to do it, know how to deal with it. And the sad thing is, even if you know how to deal with it, it doesn't mean you can escape. It's, it's very, very strong. Good luck. Good luck. All right, number three. So this is important if you play 
uh, a DP character, a character that has a Shoryuken. Now, if you're a modern gamer, you can skip this section. Congrats, I'm glad you're trying out modern. But if you're playing classic, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with DP motions. It's forward, down, diagonal, down, forward, right? It's kind of an awkward input, but Street Fighter lets you kind of cheat here. So for example, if you're holding down uh, and your opponent jumps, it's kind of awkward to hold down, press neutral, forward, down, forward. Look at this. Down, double tap forward, DP. Right, there's DP shortcuts in this game. Uh, depending on your controller device, there's other ones as well. So for example, I think if you if you hold forward and double tap down, it works as well, but look at me on hitbox, you play hitbox, here's one for you, ready? I'm holding forward, I'm gonna press down and then punch, that's it. Holding forward, that's it. The hold forward, down punch, right? This doesn't work in other games. It doesn't work in other games, but in Street Fighter, this works. So again, if you're holding down, double tap forward. If you're on hitbox or leverless, forward, like that. But learn about it. So Street Fighter, like I said, easy DP shortcuts. They exist. Depending on the uh, the controller, everybody can do them. They just have different methods, but learn how to use them because, you know, doing a DP in neutral is easy, but doing one in an awkward situation, like if you're holding down back is a bit harder. So make sure you learn these. It, it's very, very key. Every pro uses them. Whenever you're watching, like you might be watching a tournament, you'd be like, how did he DP from there? That guy's so good. He's using a shortcut. So learn the shortcuts. All right, next up, number four. So this is specific to Street Fighter VI. So you might be familiar with this, you might not, but uh, a key mechanic is the drive rush in neutral. If you're brand new, you don't need to use it yet, but you should eventually be incorporating drive rush in your game. Now, the way you do it is from a parry, you press forward forward, okay? Now look, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna press parry and double tap. Look at my drive gauge at the top. Ready? Watch my drive gauge here. You see how it went a little bit? You see how it went a little bit over? It was like 1.1 bar. And also look at my character. Notice how he does the parry and then he goes into the rush. Well, there's a way to do a perfect uh, drive rush. So instead of pressing parry forward forward, you press forward and then parry and forward together. So forward and then at the same time like that. That's the perfect drive rush. So see, it only takes one bar. It takes less meter and it comes out faster because there's no parry, right? It's an awkward input, but this is the optimal way to do it. It's not hard once you practice it. So if you're new, uh, if you plan on sticking around, this is something to try and drill into your, your memory early. You drill into your memory early. And again, some characters need it more than others, but yeah, the perfect drive rush, Memorize that. Learn it. All right, last one I'm gonna tell you in this video. There's a lot, to, a lot of different stuff, but we'll just do five today. The last one I'm gonna teach you is another very, very important uh, technique to learn. It's called a safe jump. So what is a safe jump? A safe jump is after you knock down your opponent, you know, a lot of times they're gonna try, they don't wanna block. They're gonna do EXDP reversal like this. So ready? Uh, I'm gonna knock him down. He did, oh man, he hit my EX reversal. I had to give it my turn. So what a safe jump does, is that you can still attack while blocking the reversal. It's it's very, very cheap. Every character is different. You know, you gotta learn your character, your situation. You only really need one. Uh, but for example, here's Lily, ready? I got one stock. He's set, right? He's set to do EXDP, okay? So now watch this. All right, ready? So he's gonna DP. I was able to block, okay? I was able to block. And now if he doesn't do the DP, so same thing, I'm gonna do the same thing. If he doesn't do the TP here, my attack hits him. Or if he blocks, the attack hits and it's still my turn, right? So you see, I'm covering both options right there. If he wants to reversal out, I can block in time. Punish him, I'm safe. If he wants to be respectful and block or maybe jab, my attack will hit and it's still my turn. So it's covering multiple options with just one simple like movement, one technique, right? It's a very, very, it's like a low level option select we can talk about in a different video, but safe jump, remember that. Uh, you're gonna learn, you're gonna have a lot of problems, I'm telling you, at low level fighting games, because players, they do not respect you. They are gonna be doing reversals nonstop. So if you learn a safe jump, it's a great way to just completely shut that out. If you know a safe jump and they don't wanna respect you, you're just gonna win every single time. There's nothing they can do about it. They have to hold it every time. But yeah, that's it for this one. Like I said, there's so much to learn in fighting games, but you it's overwhelming at, at first. And you know, there's a lot of like noise. You're like, do I really need to know that? Do I? 
I think these are helpful techniques. And like I said in the beginning of the video, you do not need to master them right now. Just be aware of them. Be aware of them. Know that people are using them. And eventually, uh, you know, as you get more comfortable, as you get better, you can add them in your game whenever you feel ready. But that's it. That's it. That's it. If you want to know more, I have 30 years of, of knowledge stored in this big, this big head of mine. So I'm happy to share more in a little digestible tidbit. So let me know. Uh, hit that sub button and good luck in Street Fighter. See you next one. Peace.